Welcome back to Brushes and Bites video blog. I am the artist Ryan Williams. No kidding, right? So, you saw in the first episode just a little background on me. Well, here we are in the second episode, and now we're really going to be getting to what I want this video blog to cover, which is art, and in particular my art. Obviously, it's my channel, right? So, this episode I'll be revealing my latest painting, right up there. It's called The Taming of the Q. Cute, right? Yeah. Uh, so, you, it's not just a billiard scene, there's a little bit more to it. You're going to find that out during the painting session. And uh, if you're interested in this painting, the original is not for sale. However, uh, there are copies available. I'm making copies on paper and on a canvas. So if you'd like to purchase a copy, go to the website, right there. And if you'd like to learn even a little bit more about this painting, I've also put up a story about it on my art blog, right there. And uh, you can learn a little bit more about this. There's, you know, there's always symbology, there's always metaphors in art. So uh, don't just look at something and assume you, you're looking at, in this case, a billiard scene. There's a little bit more to it. Or I guess it's however you want to interpret it. But I'm just telling you, this is what I was thinking also when I was painting this. So uh, stick around for the paint session. Here we go. You're going to see how it's all done. I'll see you at the end of this episode. Episode 2, The Taming of the Cue. That rhymes. Sweet. And here we are at the beginning. As with all paintings that I do, it starts with a sketch. I'm using charcoal. This is medium vine charcoal. It's easy to wipe off. And when I settle on the sketch, I just brush it off and it leaves a faint line. You can see underneath here uh, some of the lines that I had did previously, especially with this shot right here of the pool player holding the cue. That, I mean, that wasn't even the final position, but you can see all the sketches underneath that person. So basically, at this stage of the painting, I'm kind of improving. This painting, unlike most of my other paintings, um, was very much an off the off the hip type of painting, off the cuff, whatever you want to say. Anyways, there's the final sketch. Now it's funny, I say final sketch, but that's not the final version. As you, you saw in the preview, the background's different, and the position of the pool player on the left is different. But the general theme is there. The main element was the pool table. You see all those lines that have been erased? It was a lot of trial and error getting the perspective. The lights above the table were particularly tough, using the two-point perspective to work that out. It had to look right, otherwise the perspective would just really throw off the sense of realism. And I'm not trying to make this look 100% real, but it does have to be based in some form of reality. So I painted the felt on the table first, did a couple of layers of phthalo green with some cad yellow, mix that together to get the green effect. Then you see me working on the wood. So while you're looking at that sketch, as I'm still in the early stages, let me tell you a little bit about the scene. It is a billiard scene. It's involving two characters who are playing a game of pool. And the idea is, you know, it's just friends having a good time, maybe out on a Saturday night. But I wanted to kind of inject a little bit of symbolism there. I wanted to inject a little bit of... Um, life, kind of like a life lesson, and you might be saying, well, how can you get a life lesson out of a game of pool? Well, as the painting progresses, you can even see it in the sketch here, there is one solid, and that's the three ball, that's behind that eight ball there. The rest of the balls on the table are the stripes, and there is five stripes, I believe, on the table. And then, of course, there's a cue ball. Well, the one player on the left is going to be leaning on the table and giving a very sly, confident smile to the other player. Now, if you looked at that, your first impression might be, oh, well, that person must be winning, right? But that's not really the case. Because who would be happy about having 
one solid left on the table, but with the eight ball right up against the, the pocket. I mean, if you've got your only solid up against the eight ball and the eight ball's up against the pocket, you're kind of in a really bad position there in that game. So actually the person on the right is technically winning, but they're not too happy about it because they're not happy about their situation because of where the eight ball is. So where the little life lesson comes in and comes in here is how many times have things been going well for you in your life in a situation and all of a sudden things take a dramatic turn and you're faced with a very dramatic situation, very, very dramatic decision. Well, that's kind of what I'm trying to put in here. It's, it's subtle. Um, some might even say it's forced. I don't, I don't think it's a forced story or forced concept. It's, the, the, the arrangement of the pool balls was something I thought about. I didn't want to just randomly put pool balls on the table. It wouldn't be very interesting. This eight ball here is up against the, the corner pocket for a reason. It's to create a little bit of tension. So anyways, that's the story behind the setting. Now, if people look at it and say, oh, that's a nice billiard scene, that's fine. But this is why the table setting is laid out the way it is. Uh, I was using the palette knife there because I wanted the paint thick. I wanted that eight ball nice and thick. And uh, here you see I'm painting on the reflections of the felt on the pool table in the eight ball. It gives it a glassy look. And that's just uh, the first stage. I did that a couple of times to try and give it a good reflective look to it. Now the eight ball, now of course in real life the eight ball is black, right? Well. This eight ball is not black. It is made up of some blues, some grays, a touch of greens, and a touch of red. And uh, I put them all together. Of course, the heaviest contribution there is the blue. I don't like using black for sections of a painting. I'll use a little bit of black to mix in on occasion, but I don't like black. It's a, it's a dead color. It's not even really a color. It's actually the absence of color. So, but if your surrounding colors can, you know, complement your dark color here, then it will appear black to you. So that green felt that I worked on, when the paint's done, it helps give the 8-ball the impression that it's black. You can see now why I like using that uh, charcoal. I brushed it off, that leaves a faint print of what I had originally drawn on there, and then I can just paint this 8 over it. I think that brings me to the numbers on the pool balls. Now, obviously, the eight ball had to play a prominent role, right? Eight ball is is really the focal point of a game of eight ball. That's why it's called eight ball. But the other billiard balls, you'll see here in a second. Um, I have the nine ball featured prominently. I have the ten ball, and I have the three ball. The other billiard balls are in the back corner of the table can't really make them out that well. But the main balls here, 8, 10, 3, and 9, well, 10 and 9 make 19, 8 and 3, so 1983 is what I'm looking at. And that's just kind of a, kind of a shout out to my cousin who this painting was for. He was born in 83. That's the reason I chose those numbers. And I got the idea for this painting, um, he, my cousin wanted a painting, he said, I don't care what you do, I, I'll take anything. So I was over there at his house, he had just bought a house, and he had a pool table in it. And I thought, you know, that would be fun to do a pool scene. I, I'd been wanting to do a billiard, billiard scene for a long time, I just hadn't gotten around to it. So this was what I came up with. And who doesn't love a, a good billiard scene? You know, it's, go, it goes great in a game room. Alright, so now look at the figure, a lot different position than what the original sketch was in, and now um, I have drawn her in with a little bit of pencil so I don't lose those lines because now I'm using a little more paint colors and I gotta make sure that I can see the lines I'm painting in. So yeah, this is the woman who's looking over at the player, smiling confidently. And I decided to go with main characters as two ladies. thought that'd be a nice switch. 
I, I had been painting mostly men up to this point, so I wanted to switch it up, do a little practice painting some women. I tried to make their appearances subtle. I didn't want the, you know, supermodel look. I wanted the everyday woman look. Painting people is definitely the most challenging subject in oil painting. It is for me, and I know it's got to be for just about every other artist out there. From my seven years of pain, if I could go back in time and give myself advice before I start painting, I would say learn landscapes first, then move on to the still lives, and then go to portraits. Because portraiture is so difficult. So the scene behind the girl here, you know, where I was originally sketching those people, they were going to be sitting at a bar, and I got as far as putting in the back line for that bar scene, and I ended up taking it out. Uh, it just wasn't working. It was kind of garish. It was very distracting, and I just didn't like it, so. Let's see, I painted in the girl there. And my palette full of different colors. Now this girl here, you're gonna see her face changes over time because I was having some trouble with her face, so I had to keep redoing it. The lights here. I wanted to darken the, 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 the color around the actual light itself so that the light would really stick out so you got the impression that this table is being lit up by these lamps. And I ended up going with uh, the Tiffany look. Now you see how it's that green bar over the red trim. I had originally painted just some dark blocks there just to suggest a design, like glass design. But I thought, looking at some pictures on the internet, you know, the, the classic pool table lamp is the Tiffany look, the multicolored look. So the final product is that, and you'll see that in a minute. Boy, once that background went in, that table really started popping out. I was, I was really impressed with it. Now here's the only element from the original sketch in the background that stayed in there, and that was people playing pool in the background. And I actually added a couple of tables from the original sketch. It was just one before, now it's three. And I like how this came out. That's, that's pretty nice. Now you saw me just a minute ago painting those neon lights there on the wall. One of them says 39. This is my 39th painting. reminder to myself that I'm approaching my 40th painting. The good thing about oil paint is it's very forgiving. And I made a lot of corrections and thank thankfully I can just paint over my mistakes. And what oil painting constantly reminds me is I better have a good sketch before I start. Especially with portraits. Maybe you can get away with it in landscapes. Uh, but at least for me, I need to have a good sketch. The people back there have read it real loose because, you know, they're so far back. Now you're going to see the correction with this lady here. Check this out. Let's see what I'm saying. Are too high. I think because I've, the, the eyes are, my line is too high, I think that's cutting down the forehead and giving her a very long face because now the nose comes all the way down. The mouth's probably in the, about the right position, but because the eyes are higher, the nose has to come down to compensate, giving her a very long face. It's just not a very pleasant look. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pretty much block out the face and I'm going to redo it. And so you're going to see a correction session here and hopefully I can get her expression to work. Conversely, I have this lady, and I think her face is much better. I think the proportions are about right, the eyes, the nose, the mouth line. I think everything matches up fine there. Nice long neck. But, you know, this girl's face 
really needs to be fixed if this is going to work. All right, let's get going. Yeah, correction sessions are they're sometimes scary because what has happened to me before in the past is I end up with something that is actually worse than what I thought was bad. And that just kind of goes with, again, preparation. Have an idea of what you're going to do before you actually do it. So you can see the progression here of the, of the face. Her earlier face was a little too angry. I wanted her to look more surprised than angry. So I'm putting in, I usually put in darks first when I do faces. And then I start doing midtones. And that was the final result. I'm not 100% happy with that, but it gets the expression across. The expression is what I was more interested in. See, I glaze the wood, I glaze the felt with darker colors. I'm really happy with the felt, especially against the wood, gives it a nice rich look. Paint on the diamonds here. So this painting was a couple weeks and, uh, well, a couple weeks in terms of, of man hours. I stretched it out almost two months because I was just busy doing other things. It's a good little painting. 24 by 36 inch oil on canvas. And you know, I'll do another billiard scene someday. I, I really enjoy the billiard scenes, it's a lot of fun. And there I am signing it. This baby's done, ready to go. And it's ready for reproduction. The original is going to my cousin, and then I'm making copies of this on paper and canvas, so people who want to buy it can buy it. You can see all the neon lights. I added a jukebox back there, people hanging around the jukebox, some disco lights. It makes it look like a fun scene at night. People having fun on a Saturday night at the pool hall. And that is the taming of the queue. By the way, that little martini glass neon sign up there is a uh, tribute to the Martini Stands Alone paint I did for my other cousin, who happens to be this cousin's brother. Now, there you go. That's how it's done. At least that's how I did it. See the Tiffany glass up there. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun to do. And uh, it took me about six weeks of work. It was on and off. You know, if I was working on this every single day, this would probably have been a two-week project. But I have other things to do. I'm kind of distracted like most of us. We have all kinds of things going on in our life. So I hope you enjoyed that paint session. That's the kind of stuff you can look forward to in this video blog when I'm doing paints. Uh, in the next episode, probably you're going to be seeing some preliminary stuff from my upcoming painting. I am doing a dual portrait, uh, a silly portrait, if you will. If you go to the video, uh, the artist blog, Brushes and Bites, again right here, uh, you look at some of the past posts. I've been commenting on it. I even got a couple of pictures of uh, what it looks like right now. It is a dual portrait of Doc Holliday, but it's the Val Kilmer version from Tombstone. And he's playing cards with Heath Ledger's Joker. So, what are they have in common? Uh, they like cards? I don't know. It's just a silly thing to do. It's, I'm calling it a movie mashup and I think I'm going to do a few of those down the road here. Let's just put some characters that have some loose commonalities and then throw them together. and It's just to be silly. It'll, it should be fun. So I hope you check it out. That'll be the next episode. Come out in a couple weeks. Till then, thank you very much. I'm out of here.